All right, well, welcome back, everybody, to Rare Pepe Tutorials, and this is part three, where we're going to talk all about how to use dispensers to purchase your first Rare Pepe cards. And in the next video, part four, we'll talk about how to use dispensers to get a hold of some XCP and some Pepe cash. But before we can get into that, we have to first take a minute and talk about what exactly dispensers are. And basically, dispensers are a way of you taking Bitcoin from your Rare Pepe wallet and using it to purchase Rare Pepes directly from Exchain.io. So you go to Exchain.io. Once you go to Exchain.io, you can see on the main page, there is a section called Dispensers. And from within this section, you can purchase assets using Bitcoin to land in your Rare Pepe wallet. When you're looking at the interface, what you'll see is that there's an address up top. So this is the interface for, for a dispenser for a card called VR Pepe. And if I want to purchase this card, what I'll do is I'll go into Rare Pepe wallet and I'll send Bitcoin from my Rare Pepe wallet address to this address up top. Here's the amount of Bitcoin that I will send. And here is what I will get in return. I will get one token or one asset called VR Pepe. So that's the basics of how dispensers work. And a lot of times when I explain that to people, they say, okay, so a dispenser is, is like a smart contract, right? Well, not quite. There's a, there's a pretty significant difference. And instead, I think it's better to describe a dispenser like a vending machine. And, and here's what I mean. If you were to walk up to a vending machine that sold these uh, one pound bags of potato chips, that's a lot of potato chips. Um, and the vending machine was full, except for this bin here, bin A1. And if you were to put in a dollar and type in A1, what would happen? Well, the vending machine would still take your money in, but you would get nothing back in return. And this is kind of how it's different from a smart contract, because this same thing can happen with dispensers. You know, sometimes the dispenser will close, uh, maybe because it's been emptied or maybe just because the person who was hosting it decided to close it. And you will then see a message that says, do not send funds to this dispenser. The dispenser is closed. It will not give out any tokens. But if you still send Bitcoin to that address, the transaction will go through and you will essentially lose your Bitcoin. Now, you may be saying, you know, who would do such a thing? Who would send money to an address when they see that great big warning? And, and what usually happens is it's not done on purpose. It's, it's done by mistake, right? Maybe uh, you haven't refreshed the web browser in a while and you didn't even realize that dispenser was closed. You know, and so you send to the dispenser and then maybe you refresh the web browser and you realize, oh, no, I made a huge mistake. Well, that Bitcoin's still going to go through that transaction. You're going to lose the Bitcoin and you're not going to get a token in return. Here's another scenario that can also occur uh, where you could have maybe two people. Uh, like, let's say you're having a Pepe party here and, and two people want to go and they want to get this one remaining bag of chips from bin A1. So the first person puts in their dollar and types in A1, and the second person puts in their dollar and types in A1. Well, who's going to get the chips, right? And in, in a physical uh, example like this, you know, I, it would be pretty obvious that you're making a mistake because, you know, now that the dispenser or the vending machine is empty. But this happens, uh, I'm not going to say all the time, but it happens kind of commonly with dispensers where you have a dispenser that has one give remaining. You can see in the upper left there, it says one give remaining. That means there's only one card left. And you have one person in one area of the world and another person in another area of the world, and they both want that card. And they just happen to both send to this address at almost the same time. So when that happens, what's the result? Well, the result is one of those people will get the card and the other person will just lose their money. They'll lose their Bitcoin. Now, I say that they'll lose their Bitcoin. The, the truth is that if you enc encounter this scenario, you could go on to Telegram, you could go on to Discord, you could ask around a little bit and, and hopefully find the person who is hosting that dispenser. If you find the person they will refund you the money. I mean, this is this is one of the best communities out there and everybody's trying to look out for each other. But what if that person who hosted the dispenser isn't active on Telegram? What if they're not active on Discord? You know, it's going to be a lot of detective work to try to figure out who exactly was running that dispenser and, and contact them and then try to get your refund. If you can get in touch with the person, you know, I've I've always had good results with them refunding the Bitcoin. But uh, if you can't get in touch with the person, then unfortunately that money has gone. 
So I don't want to scare anybody off, but I just want to share some strategies so that this doesn't happen to you. Um, and the first strategy is just refresh your web page often. Refresh your browser often so that you're sure you're looking at the most up-to-date information. Next strategy is look for a dispenser with a, a lot of give remaining. And, and what I mean by this is if we look at this VR Pepe dispenser, we can see that it started out with five cards available from the dispenser, and there's only three remaining. And this is because of these uh, previous dispenses. You can see there were two VR Pepe's that went out that were successfully dispensed. So there's only three give remaining. Well, I say only three, but that's still a lot better than only one, right? Because if there's only one, I'm much more likely to run into that scenario where two people are trying to hit the dispenser at the same time. So that's one strategy that you can use is kind of look out for uh, dispensers that have more than one in the give remaining field. Also, before you send to that dispenser, take a look at xchain.io and maybe another blockchain explorer and search that destination address and see if there are any existing pending transactions going to that address. That might indicate that somebody else is already trying to get that card and maybe it's better for you to, to go and find a different dispenser or find another deal somewhere else uh, rather than fighting that battle. Maybe another strategy is just to use better tools like freewallet.io. They just did an upgrade this past weekend and uh, they have a lot of great tools, including tools to help notify you if there are pending transactions going to the dispenser you're trying to hit. So maybe another, another strategy is just to use better tools. And then finally here, as you're just getting started, just start small. You know, don't, don't save up all your Bitcoin for that one giant purchase and have that be your first experience with dispensers. Buy a couple of uh, cheap cards. There's definitely some cheap cards out there. And, uh, and then once you get used to how the mechanics work, then make that big purchase. And if you're purchasing XCP or Pepe Cash, maybe consider breaking up your purchases. So for example, if you were going to try to buy 60,000 P Cash, uh, maybe instead of purchasing that all in one single transaction, break it up into three different transactions. And that way, um, if one of them goes bad, you still have the uh, 40,000 P cash from the other two transactions. So these are just strategies that you can use. You know, I know I've been talking now for about seven minutes, over seven minutes on this topic. I think it's an important topic, especially as you're getting started. Uh, but I could easily talk for another 30 minutes on this. And what I really want to do is I want to show you how this works, uh, you know, do an actual live demonstration. So I'm just going to stop here talking about it and just say, hey, if you if you have any stories or strategies you want to share, go into the comments below. Let us know, you know, any stories you've run into. Uh, did you ever, you know, run into the situation, but you were able to recover the the uh, missing Bitcoin? If so, what did that look like? You know, let us know down in the comments because I'm sure there's going to be a lot of new people watching this video, and uh, anything that you can share with them is just going to help them with with their first experiences in this rare Pepe space. So with that, let me jump over into uh, the live demonstration, show you guys what this actually looks like to purchase my first card using a dispenser. All right, so here we are again inside of our Rare Pepe wallet. You can see that we're using the same address that we've been using throughout the tutorial series. And I just want to remind everyone that this is a live address that I'm using here. If you've enjoyed what you've seen so far, if you like that description of the uh, the dispensers being like vending machines, feel free to go into your Rare Pepe wallet and send me some of your favorite Rare Pepes. I'll add them to my collection here and uh, maybe we can show them off in some upcoming episodes of this tutorial series. But what we did in our last episode was we went in and we added some Bitcoin to this wallet. And so what we want to do now is use that Bitcoin to purchase our first rare Pepe. And so to do that, I'm going to go to the website xchain.io and I'm going to look at the dispensers on xchain.io. So right here on the main page, there's a section called dispensers. I'm going to click into that section. And then what I can see here is I can see the name of the asset that's being dispensed and I can see the amount of Bitcoin that it will cost. So Dank Pepe is going for one full Bitcoin now. That is awesome. I think it's still undervalued. I think that should be more like 1,000 BTC. That would probably be the appropriate value for that card. That's how amazing that card is. Uh, but uh, but that is what you're going to be looking for as you're you know as you're looking down through here. You're going to be looking for the name of the asset, and you're going to be looking for how much it costs. So I want to look for an asset that's a little bit more in my price range. I have about $500 in Bitcoin available in my Rare Pepe wallet. So I'm going to click through this list here.
And now we can see that I've come to a card uh, that I think is within my price range. So this VR Pepe card here, you can see that it is going for 0 0.00087353 Bitcoin. That is within my price range. So I'm now going to choose this button here that says view. And this then shows me the information about this card. So what am I looking for? Well, the first thing I'm looking for is, is this text green? Because if it's, if it's not green, it's going to be red with a warning saying the dispenser is closed. So right away, I know we're in good shape because the dispenser is open. I'm also going to be looking over here in this section at the give remaining, making sure that that's, you know, ideally that that's more than one. It's just one of those things that we talked about in our strategy section to, to maybe help avoid a problem. So this all looks good. I think I'm ready to send some Bitcoin to this address. So what I'll do is I'll take this entire address up here, this whole address right here, and I'll just copy it to my clipboard. And then I'm going to go into Rare Pepe Wallet and I'm going to go up to the little dollar sign in the upper right and then I'll click on the Bitcoin icon. And now I can choose to paste that address here. So I'm sending from my Rare Pepe Wallet address to this address. And what am I sending? Well, once again, I'll go over here to the send amount. So we'll go over here to this value right here, the send amount. And once again, I will copy that and then go into my Rare Pepe wallet and I will paste that. Now, if for some reason I wanted two or even three of these uh, uh, VR Pepe cards, I could go into a program like Calculator and I could I could multiply the send amount uh, to you know to reflect the appropriate quantity. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to send the amount for one. I just need one card tonight. So that's pretty much it. You take the, the destination address, you copy it, you take the send amount, you copy it, you go in here to your wallet, click on the Bitcoin icon, and you're ready to go. So I'm going to choose send. And once I choose send, that's it. It goes through. It says the transaction was sent. I have now sent this Bitcoin to this address. And uh, provided that that address still has a give remaining and that I sent the correct amount, well, it should all go through properly. And I should be able to, in just a few minutes, get that asset back and have it show up in my Rare Pepe wallet. You know, right now, what we'll see is if I go to show my Rare Pepes, this is empty. I don't have any Rare Pepes in my wallet yet. There are 1,774 Rare Pepes total. I have zero so far. Uh, but what we'll also see is that if I refresh this web page, there's now going to be a little red one up in this section here. And what that little red one means is that I currently have a, a pending transaction. I can actually click on this send receive here and it'll show me that pending transaction in exchange.io. So this is telling me that uh, I've, you know, I'm trying to send something to a destination address, but it hasn't gone through yet. It is a pending transaction. So what we'll do here is we'll just wait a few minutes. And after waiting a few minutes, what we'll see is that this one will change back to a zero. And that means that the transaction has processed. All right, and it looks like it actually only took a few minutes this time. Uh, sometimes those transactions will take like 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour. Uh, but this one actually went through in, in less than 10 minutes. Um, and so we can see here that the red one in the circle with the pending transaction is no longer an unconfirmed transaction. We can see here if we examine it in exchange.io and we refresh it, that it looks like the transaction did go through. So if we go back to my rare Pepe wallet and we once again click this show my rare Pepe's, hey, 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 there we go. We did it. We got our first rare Pepe into our rare Pepe wallet. This is an exciting time right here. Um, and if we were to go to the book here in the upper right, so this book right here, we can actually browse by series. So I could go down here to series or volume three, series 29. And we can see that all the cards in series 29 are grayed out or that kind of lighter color, except for the one card that I own, the VR Pepe card, my very first card in my rare Pepe wallet. So that's uh, kind of an overview of how to use dispensers. Uh, the only thing that I didn't show you about how to use dispensers is you can go in here, if there's a card that you want, like let's say you, you really wanna buy DJ Pepe, you could go here to exchange.io, just to the main page. And then up here in the upper right, you could type in the asset that you want. So you could type in DJ Pepe here. And then you can see that it shows you this asset, DJ Pepe. So I could click on it there. And then what I could do is I could click here where it says dispensers. 
And so now instead of showing me dispensers for, you know, every card that's out there, every dispenser that everyone's putting up, it just shows me the dispensers that are related to that particular asset, to the DJ Pepe asset. So I could say view here, and then I could take my uh, 1.5 Bitcoin and send it to this address. Um, I don't quite have that amount in my rare Pepe wallet today, but maybe someday. Uh, but I just wanted you to know that like, if there's a card that you specifically are looking for, you don't have to sit here and scroll through every single dispenser. You can just go up here to the upper right and then you can search for that asset that you're hoping to acquire. So that's going to do it for part three in our tutorial series. I hope that now you have a better understanding of what dispensers are and how they work. After you purchase your first card from a dispenser, be sure to go down in the comments and let me know which card you purchased. There's definitely some good ones out there. And of course, be sure to come back for the next episode in this tutorial series where we show you how to use dispensers to purchase PCash and XCP.